what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Nusantara project official version 4.4 and this is the name Selat Muria or something like that <laughs> I can't really pronounce that but I'm sorry for that and here we have the A12L version and of course that is the version Android 12.1 or Android 12L and this is the 8th April 2022 build. And I have been using this ROM for about two days now for on the Redmi K20 Pro and the flashing procedure is pretty similar with like any other custom ROM and you can check out the flashing guide from the description or the cards. And here it actually says Stealth Moria I think yeah and here if you are looking at the wallpaper it looks like this black or stealth kind of dark and everywhere in the UI you will find darkness over here if you have enabled the dark theme. And here as you can see I have enabled the dark theme and everything like the quick setting panel and stuff stays dark if you're noticing and swiping up gets you to the app drawer and that is too in dark and to the left of the home screen the Google's discover page is dark and even if you open Google Chrome that too seems to be dark and yes you can actually go for this like totally black theme or you can disable that too but here this dark kind of look or AMOLED or pitch black kind of look I'm really liking over here. This is how the settings panel looks like and here we have the about section on top then we have the Nusantara wings and there we have the network and the battery settings right here. So this is well organized I would say and it looks a lot different when you compare it to the other ROMs. But first let me show you the about section. So here inside about we have the Android version like this and if you keep tapping on it or just like this it, it will give you this kind of look of the Nusantara project. Even here it looks beautiful I would say it looks different than other ROMs. Let me just go back from here and we have the maintenance name right here Wadi Habib. Huge thanks to him for this amazing ROM and we have the Android version as Android 12L but as you can see if I'm doing this it gives you a haptic feedback everywhere even in this clock and it feels awesome. It's like a pixel and here this is how the doodle looks like of Android 12. Let me just scroll down. We still have the March security patch for some reason. This is not April security patch yet. And we have the stock kernel as the Snaplight Infinity kernel. The SNX status shows as enforcing. Now on the bottom of the settings, you will find the system. And if you go here, we have the gestures. We have the quickly open camera right here. We have this toggle flashlight, but it's disabled. And we have the system navigation gestures in the settings. We have the swipe to invoke assistant. And if you do this, as you can see, you can get the Google Assistant just like this. Even that is too in dark. And here if you scroll down more we have the pill length and the pill radius customization so you can customize everything from here and of course you can have the pill bar even thicker if you want to but yes this is fine i would say the pill margin from bottom that too you can customize that's great we have the full screen gestures too then we have the normal left edge right edge customization then two button and three button navigations are there as well and let me just disable the dark theme for the time being so that i can show you in the white theme how does it look by the way the accent color is depending on the wallpaper so if you change the wallpaper it will change and this is how the quick setting panel looks like in the white theme so i just went with this wallpy wallpaper and i'll link this app in the description box below don't worry and this is how it looks like with this greenish wallpaper and the accent color as you can see has changed to green now inside gestures again we have the quickly open camera if you disable that we get this toggle flashlight option so now you can double press the power button twice to get the toggle flashlight option and we have the one handed mode too and that is too is working perfectly fine if you're noticing and we have the press and hold power button for toggling the flashlight or assistant and stuff those things are still there and again you can customize it however you want to use it let me go back we have the pop-up camera settings we do get a camera calibration option so you can calibrate the front camera if it's stuck or something and we have the pop-up camera sound effects then the front camera raised dialog and the camera ready normal stuff and we have the developer options because i have enabled that also we get the gboard as the default keyboard over here of course now again talking about the home screen we still get the pixel launcher over here and if you go into the settings as you can see this is how the settings looks like we have the suggestion of disabling option but then again we don't have any kind of double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen but that is present on the status bar and once you double tap as you can see this is how it locks and yes you have to double tap to wake because i don't have the always on display turned on but let me actually turn it on and right now as you can see this is how the always on display looks like it looks pretty bold and beautiful and once you double tap it will wake the screen just like this and yes the animations everywhere are working totally fine if you are looking at this and let me tap the Fimit scanner and I would say the Fimit scanner is not the fastest what I have seen when compared to other ROMs but yeah it works fine I would say but with very low brightness and a really dark wallpaper it may not work properly for you 
that I have seen but otherwise the fingerprint scanner should be working fine I would say but yes it does take a little bit longer when compared to other ROMs like that I have used like the Evolution X and stuff I would say so yeah the fingerprint scanner works no problems with that and there is a little bit of animation which appears let me show you up close this is how the animation looks also there is the face unlock and I have already added the face unlock for that I have to swipe up then point the device towards my face and as you can see it unlocks and I would say the app lock 2 is working fine over here as you can see I have locked the telegram and if I tap the fingerprint scanner right now unlocks so yeah the app lock the face unlock and the fingerprint scanner everything is working fine and here the animations of the widgets and stuff they should be working great and we still have these Android 12 L kind of animations and this is a really good thing that in Evolution X we do not get this white kind of quick setting panel here we get that in Android 12 L and everywhere in the UI these animations should look really really like fabulous I would say again talking about the quick setting panel we got the time right there then we got the battery how long it will last and we have the other quick setting panel stuff the brightness right there appears on the bottom because I have customized that I'll show you the customization panel later on but now let me show you the toggles that I have added here we have the FPS info and stuff the always on toggle is there and we have the screen recorder you can record the device audio and microphone audio at the same time with this of course and we have the heads up then the battery saver the do not disturb also the data saver and you can add and edit multiple toggles from right here we of course have the dc dimming right here and the high brightness mode also appears if you are going to use the outdoor brightness or stuff like that in the settings we have the nusantara wings there you will get all the customizations so let me just go into it and this is how the customization panel looks like it definitely looks like some other ROM that I have seen like Corvus or something I don't remember but yeah this customization panels definitely looks familiar to me and we have the game space as the first option over here and here we have the disable heads up in gaming mode or the game space and we have in game ringer mode to silent or you can customize that to vibrate or normal then we have the other brightness kind of features and you can add a particular game I guess from right here let me just go back we have the themes and from here you will get the black theme so if you turn that on and if you turn on the dark theme it will go completely black or amoled or pitch black and we have the font style you can change between multiple fonts there are plethora of options including the sony nokia etc kind of fonts and we have the icon packs too you can actually see which icon packs looks like what and we have the icon shapes too and you get plethora of icon shapes from here also we have the monet theme engine customization you can customize the lightness the color accuracy and stuff let me go back from here we have the notifications there we have the show notification count and stuff let me scroll down more we have the blink flashlight for incoming call then the in call vibration options are also there to the misc settings and here we have the screenshot sound disabling option the screen of animation and stuff you can change unlimited google photo storage also is there and the swipe direct screenshot is working perfectly fine if you're noticing we also have the capture mode then the delete edit options and we have the double tap to sleep on the lock screen or status bar as well let me go back to the lock screen and here inside lock screen items we have the four small clock option charging animation and the lock screen charging info then we have the temperature unit changing option inside fingerprint preference we have the fingerprint success vibration and the error vibration ripple effect but then again we don't get any fingerprint scanner icon changing option or the animation changing option and that's how it is here we have the battery options and we have the battery style now here this is what i like that the battery icons are plenty over here and just like look at this battery style on the shade as well it looks definitely different it looks pretty beautiful i would say and yes you won't get this kind of battery icons in like most roms but yes you get the landscape kind of battery icons like the style a style b style c and stuff like that are there so yeah, a lot of battery icons that you will get over here and you can use any of them let me go back we have the battery percentage you can have it inside or outside the icon then we have the battery estimates and the percentage and estimate then the battery charging light which you can enable in do not disturb mode as well and clock and date of course you can customize however you want to then the icon manager is there we have the status bar icons headset bluetooth etc icons you can customize from right here the colored icons are there and we have the nusantara logo for some reason if you want to enable that this is how the logo will appear on the left side we also have the show privacy indicator option and we have the combined signal icons as well then we have the vaulty icon 4g icon then we have the show data disabled icons 
Here in the quick setting panel, we have the height quick setting on lock screen, then we have the vibrate on toggle touch of the quick setting panel, and we have the brightness slider position changing option from top to bottom. Then we also have the show brightness slider on quick setting panel, or we have the adaptive brightness buttons too. So you can customize these if you want to. Now I'm not using a SIM card over here, but vault calling and stuff should be working great over here. And the traffic indicators, you can also enable and customize that thoroughly. We have the buttons next and we have the volume rocker wake, then the volume panel on the left side. Inside navigation, we have the nav bar toggle and then we have the system navigations as well. Haptic feedback works perfectly fine and excellent swipe action is also there and we have the long swipe action and stuff. Let me go back. That's all the customizations we get over here. Let me just jump into the battery settings and this is how the battery settings looks like. We get the battery temperature monitoring on the bottom in the battery settings. Then we also have the battery saver and you can also schedule it if you want to. Now, if you don't use the battery saver, the battery life, let me actually talk about it. I have used the Aku battery up, check the battery stats. And here I would say I have got about five to six hours of screen on time with this kind of battery that I have over here. And this battery is quite old. It's about three years old almost 700 plus charging cycles and I would say with that the battery life is decent even when you are getting 6 plus hours of screen on time. So yes, the battery life should be decent over here. Now fast charging works fine over here too with a 18 watt or even a 33 watt fast charger it should be working great. And now if you're looking at the battery health it's quite low and I have been getting about 66% or 70% battery health. That's not really good, but yes, it's decent, I would say, but it will improve over time, I feel. I have charged the device for at least two times after flashing this ROM, so it may improve in future. Inside sound, this is how it looks like. And by the way, in the settings everywhere, you will see these kind of icons popping out and they look really beautiful and different, I would say. Now, again, we have the like same kind of icons in the sound settings too. And here, this is how the volume panel appears and this is how it looks like. And when you expand it, this is how the volume panel looks like. Looks beautiful, I would say. Looks pretty smooth. And we have the vibrate for calls and the other ringtone vibration pattern changing option and stuff. Then we have the touch sound, touch vibration for the haptic feedback. Then the per app volume control is also there. We also get the Mi sound enhancer. Then we have all these presets. Of course, I have been using it with the u edition. We have even more presets right here and hi-fi audio option is also there. Now the sound quality for the Bluetooth headset and the headphone jack as well was great. Even the speaker sounds awesome over here. No issues with the sound quality overall in this ROM. Also, there is the clear speaker option. If you have some dust in your speaker, you can clear it out. In the display settings, we have the brightness level, the adaptive or auto brightness. Then we have the lock screen settings. We have the double line clock and stuff again. Then we have the screen timeout and the dark theme. And of course, we have the allow window level blurs. So as you can see, this is the blur I'm talking about. And this appears to be working super fine. We have the font size, the display size, the DPI customization. The colors, I have changed it to saturated, but you can also use it with the booster or something like that. And we have the double tap to wake two over here. Then the display cutout option is there for some reason. And we have the custom display settings. There we'll get the DC dimming and the high brightness mode, which you also get with the quick setting panel too. Now, this is very disappointing for some reason. I am not really sure why, but it fails the safety net test. If you're noticing right here, banking apps may not work over here because it fails the safety net test. But if you are someone who uses Magisk, then it should be fine for you. But for me, the safety net is actually failing over here. I'm not really sure why. Let me tell you, I have moved to this ROM from the Evolution X ROM where I was rooted with Magisk. But here, this time while clean flashing, I did not flash Magisk. So technically, it should actually pass safety net right out of the box, I guess. But here, for me, it didn't pass the safety net. But yes, again, of course, if you're someone who uses Magisk, it's not a problem for you. Talking about the DRM Info, of course, it's L1, so you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p. Talking about the A12L features like the split top and stuff, they should be working great. And as you can see, split top is working fine. And as you can see, again, you can switch between apps just like this. And once you go home, the app stays together in the recent panel. And these features are really awesome and they are working perfectly fine here. Now, if you want to look at the performance benchmarks and here are the Android 2 and Geekbench score while daily driving, I haven't seen much issues, but yes, the performance benchmarks are a little lower when compared to other ROMs like the Evolution X again. I almost skipped one part that is regarding the camera. It doesn't come with any kind of stock camera over here. So I had to install a separate camera. This is the camera I have installed. I didn't test the NX camera, of course, yet, but yeah. And as you can see, this is a Gcam version 2.5 of Unix, I guess. 7.3 Unix and this is working perfectly fine. Night set and stuff, they should be working perfectly fine. And even we have the ultra wide angle lens working great. Even the 2x telephoto lens should be working great here. So yes, I would say the camera should be decently working if you install a Gcam separately.
But yes, then again, you don't get any kind of stock camera over here. So let me in the comments, what do you guys think about the latest Nusantara ROM based on Android 12 L on the Redmi K20 Pro? Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today. I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye now.